Howdy, this is Lemmy with RevZilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to install mufflers on your Harley Touring bike. So you're probably watching this video because you're contemplating a set of mufflers for your touring bike, and you're probably also thinking about doing the installation yourself. Putting a muffler on your touring bike is a great idea. The first benefit you're gonna get is some awesome sound. Check out our stock Street Glide versus our Street Glide with an aftermarket set of mufflers on it. That sounds pretty great, right? Slip-on mufflers are almost perfectly suited to touring bikes for a couple reasons. Firstly, they're really easy to access. Anybody can get them on. It's not a difficult job. The other thing that's nice too is because most touring riders aren't really interested in maximum horsepower, a set of slip-on mufflers will give you the great looks and sound that you're wanting without the big price tag attached to a full system exhaust. The other nice thing about mufflers is they're not quite as loud as most full systems. That's great for you guys on touring bikes because typically you guys are the guys racking up huge miles and often you have a passenger with you too. Beating up your eardrums is not exactly a great way to spend an afternoon. Now installation on these really is quite simple. I'm going to call it a one bearder on our BSD or beard scale of difficulty. Most of you guys should be able to install this thing with no sweat. It's just going to require some basic hand tools and a little bit of wrenching knowledge. Most of you guys should be able to get this done in well under an hour. I know I certainly do and I'm sure some of you guys are going to best my times. The process is really simple. You remove your bag, you slide your old muffler off, you put your new muffler on, check for leaks, and get out there and go listen to your hot new sounds. Let's take a peek at this thing and start the job. Now we're going to be changing these up on our 2013 Street Glide here. You should probably know that just about every single Harley dresser from 95 right on up through modern day has mufflers that attach in exactly the same way. So if you see me doing it here, odds are very good you're going to be doing the same thing on your particular motorcycle with the exception of one or two weird aberrant models. So you're also going to see here, I have this thing up on our lift. This is completely unnecessary if you're doing this at home. The only reason we have this thing on the lift is so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and we don't break our poor cameraman's back trying to get good shots in this. Step one, let's get this bag off. If you don't know how to do this, you're probably in trouble. Pop your bag lid, remove your quick release hardware, slide that stuff out. I like to drop it back in the bag so I don't lose it. Pull the bag off the bike carefully, be delicate so you don't break anything, and put it somewhere safe. Once you have that done, you've completed the first step in getting to the mufflers themselves. Now we're gonna raise this thing up just a little bit so you guys have a better look at what it is exactly that I'm about to do to remove this muffler from the bike. Let's get her up in the air. Alrighty, we've got this thing up in the air. You can see I've already done the left side of this bike. The left and the right sides are mirror images of each other, so if you watch me do one side, just apply everything I said to the other side and you should be set to rock and roll. There's really only three bolts that we need to break loose in order to get this muffler out of here. As such, we don't need much in the way of tools. You can see down here, I've got a ratchet, a three inch extension, a half inch socket, and a 9 16 inch socket. That's all you need to do the entire job. Most of you probably have this stuff laying around even in a shoebox somewhere. Heck, I think I have this kicking around on the floor of my pickup. You don't need much in the way of tooling. I like to start by loosening up the muffler clamp. Take your 9 16 socket, throw it on your ratchet, and start loosening the clamp at the head of the muffler. You don't need to take the bolt all the way out, you just need to get it loose enough to move around like this. Once you've done that, you can pop your socket off, put your half inch socket onto the end of your extension. You need the extension to clear the saddlebag rail. So we're going to loosen those up. I like to loosen the first one, and then when I come to the second one, loosen that one too, but put your hand underneath the muffler to support it. This is the only thing holding the muffler in place. So you want to help bear the weight of the muffler so you don't wind up dropping this or perhaps damaging your factory mufflers. Once you get them both finger loose, you can pop the bolts out very quickly. We're coming up to what's probably the hardest part of the job, removing the muffler from the head pipe. Even though these things are slip-on mufflers, sometimes they don't slip on or slip off very easily. Sometimes you have to kind of put a little bit of Gorilla into them to back them off of the actual head pipe. There's a pretty fine line between getting enough muscle behind it to get them off and damaging something. So you want to move it as little as you can so you don't beat up the head pipe or perhaps damage anything further upstream. But recognize you may have to wrestle just a little bit because corrosion and rust can work their way in between the joint here. 
So what I like to do is kind of rotate as I work things back. And this one is coming off pretty easily. Now we've got it free. You want to make sure that you retain the Torca clamp that comes on your factory muffler. You may have to reuse it. Some manufacturers will include a set of clamps, but typically you're going to find yourself reusing the OEM piece. Now as far as this heavy hunk of junk, get it out of your life. Put it in your garage or your attic or something, or maybe bring it to the swap meet and sell it. Carefully, of course, so you don't bang anything up. Once you get your new muffler, you're going to want to take a peek at how it gets oriented. You can see here, this particular muffler has some branding that makes it evident which side goes to the outside of the motorcycle. However, not every single muffler has such a thing on it. So what I like to do is look for this indent. This dent here is to help the swing arm clear when it's moving up and down so it doesn't wreck the mufflers. This is really important that you get the right side on the right and the left side on the left, otherwise you may damage your brand new mufflers. Aside from looking goofy, having this dent pointing out, people will see it and wonder why it's there. So we're going to reinstall our Torca clamp on here, just slide that over the end of the muffler, and then we're going to slide this thing back onto the head pipe. Not too difficult. Again, the way you came off is sort of the same way. You're going to slide this on there, like so, and get it loosely in place. What I like to do from here is by hand, loosely install these mufflers back, er, the muffler bolts into the muffler itself. The reason you want to do things loosely is so all these parts kind of get to know each other. If you start cranking down with big torque values on things right out of the gate, you might wind up damaging something, especially if the parts don't really like each other. So by working and installing everything loosely and ascertaining that everything fits together nicely, you can then go back and get everything all snug. So one of the tricks I like to do too when I'm installing a set of mufflers is when I work on the clamp, I like to rotate it back underneath. That way, it's not very visible. Even if you're at the side of the bike, you don't see the nasty hardware hanging out. All you see are nice chrome shields and nicely finished mufflers. So I'm going to go back to my 916 socket here and snug up this clamp. You can see here, snugging it up is not a particularly difficult job. Before I get all the way tight, one of the things I like to do is to look at this set of mufflers and make sure that they're evenly installed. You want the depth of them to be the same. You don't want something fore or aft to the other one or it'll look kind of weird. True dual exhaust are supposed to be mirror images on both sides and we're going to make sure that's actually the case on these. Let's line these up a little bit. That looks good. Now I'm going to finish clamping down, snug this puppy up. and we're all set. I'm going to snug down the bolts at the rear of the muffler, like so, using my tool. Now you may have supplied torque values from your aftermarket manufacturer. You may also be required to reuse your OEM torque values. Read your aftermarket muffler destructions to figure out exactly which you need to do. I've done quite a few of these. I feel confident I'm not going to break anything, so I'm going to skip out on using a torque wrench. Do as I say, not as I do. At this point, I am exhausted. Time for a drink. Let's get on it. Ah, too much. Woo wee! The Street Glide runs on 87 octane, but old Lem Lem got his hands on some rocket fuel. Let's talk about what we got left to do here. If you've made it this far, I'm hoping you have not fired up your bike yet. You're not quite there. The first thing we need to do before we get this thing off the lift and outside is to wipe down the mufflers. This might sound kind of silly, but you installed these things and there's all sorts of grease and grossness on your hands and on your bike. If that grease is left on the pipes or the mufflers anywhere, it can actually burn in the first time these things get hot and you're going to have a permanently stained muffler for the duration of that muffler's life on your bike. If you have any doubt in your mind that you've gotten them completely clean, go back and do it again. It's not something you can ever recover from or fix. Wipe them down, get them clean. Once you've got that done, you're going to fire the bike up. Use your hands to check around the muffler to head pipe joint that you just disturbed to make sure that there's no leaks. Once you've ascertained there's no exhaust gas getting by, you should be about set to fly. Jump on there, open them up a little bit, and listen to how those new pipes sound. One word of note though, be very careful. When you're using your hands around that joint, don't come in contact with any of the pipes. They are super duper hot, they heat up quickly, and you can and possibly will burn yourself. Just be mindful when you're working around that joint. From there, all you need to do is get your bags back on, get the lids locked down, and you're set to start piling on some miles. 
That's the ZLA way of throwing mufflers on your touring bike. As you can see, it's not really that hard. Most of you guys should be able to get this done really quickly, and I think you're gonna be really happy with the results. If you're watching this on YouTube, click below, leave me a comment if you get stuck. You can also cruise over to Revzilla's Common Tread. I wrote an article on this where we delve into some deeper details on exhaust installation. If you're still stuck, give one of our gear geeks a holler for immediate assistance. 877-792-9455 will get you a geek by phone. Or you can always drop us an email, cs at revzilla.com. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.